Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing another empties video. Now, if you've seen any of my empties videos in the past, normally you'll see that I have like one full overflowing bag of empties, and I'll be like, oh, it's a lot, it's gonna be a long video, strap in. Well, we got a bag and a half, at least. It's been a while since I cleaned out my over <laughs> my empties drawer, and I eventually just grabbed a Sephora bag, because I like keeping these bags just to recycle and use them for other things. So I opened up one of these and was using them for my empties, and before I realized it, I had <laughs> a ton. So <laughs> this time, I really mean it. It's probably going to be a long video. I'm probably going to be talking for at least an hour. I don't know if I have enough water to get through this, but we're going to go through all of my empties. And there's a lot. There's a lot of makeup. There's a lot of uh, body care. There's a lot of hair care. There's a lot of random things from around my house, too. Like, there's a Febreze bottle in here. I'm going to talk about it because it's an empty. <laughs> so, get comfy, grab a snack, grab a drink, and let's jump in because I'm sure this is going to be long. Alrighty, so now that all the categories are organized, let's start with random house things. We'll go into hair care, skin care, and then makeup. So I think the only uh, random house thing I have, I was going to go through candles, but I actually just placed an order with a local candle company, and I'm super excited to pick those, uh, not pick those up, but I'm excited for those to come in. I'm really trying to support more local, smaller brands when it comes to like candles and stuff. So whenever those come through, I'll make sure I post about them on my other socials. Um, but meanwhile, the only other like house care thing I have is Febreze. I freaking love Febreze. I don't know what it is about the scent. Like, just the original scent. It's just so nice. I love refreshing, like, my duvet, just my curtains. Especially when I'm stuck in one room most of the time, because I am still working from home full-time. I, I just love candles, and I love room sprays, and I love Febreze. It's a little pricey, but I, I just I love this scent so much. So I will continue to use this and purchase it. I'll probably see if I can buy it, honestly, in bulk on Amazon or something. Moving into hair care. I have two minis. Let's talk about these first, because neither one was, like, spectacular, and I'm not... I mean, I'm glad I tried the minis. I didn't buy a full size. The first one is this IGK dry shampoo. This is the Charcoal Detox Dry Shampoo. And this had awesome reviews. And I was actually going to buy a full size before I found this. I think this was like a point perk or free with order from Sephora. I had it for forever. And I finally just now got around to using it. It's just an okay dry shampoo. It smells really nice. But it leaves a terrible white cast. So bad. Like, I have dark hair horrible white cast and I heard this was really good for curly hair but because of that white cast you really do have to like either brush it out or rub it through it didn't work that great so while it smelled amazing the white cast just really makes this a meh for me especially because it's so expensive it's so expensive guys so I'm glad I tried it I took this off my loves list because I'm not gonna be buying a full size but yeah I'm glad I got to try it that being said, if you even if you have darker hair, if you keep your hair straight, that might work for you because you just have to brush out the white cast parts of it to like rub it in. Next, we have this from Dry Bar. Now, I really don't try products from Dry Bar anymore because they're really geared towards people who blow fry their hair. Um, but this is the Southern Bell Volume Boosting Root Lifter. So it was really to get volume in the roots, which is what I'm trying to do here. I put my hair up when it's drying, just to give me a little bit more volume in the, the right here, especially because I don't have any layers in my hair right now because my hair has been growing out quarantine. Um, and my hair is kind of all the same length. So up here just looks really flat. So I really wanted to try this out and see. It's a foam that you have to work into your roots and I didn't see any difference at all. So Again, I'm glad I tried it in this little mini. I'm sure it was a free point or something, but it just wasn't worth it for me. All right, so moving on to some products I loved. One I've actually already repurchased. So this one, I don't think you can see it. Uh, where is it? There, over here, you can see the new bottle that I bought of this already, because it's going straight into my shower because I loved the shampoo so much. Well, it's actually a co-wash. This is the Head and Shoulders Royal Oils Moisturizing Co-wash. This is the best co-wash I've found. It makes me feel clean and my hair looks really nice and still moisturized and it just makes me feel clean. That's the thing. Like I feel like I was always in this kind of in-between space where co-wash would leave me feeling moisturized but wouldn't really clean my scalp or my hair. This is amazing and it's affordable. You can buy it online. So yeah, I went through this whole thing. I really like the shampoos from this collection. They have a sulfate shampoo and they have the co-wash. So I only use the sulfate shampoo like once or twice a month, which is why I still have it in my shower. I don't use it that often, but this I used every other 
wash day and I loved alternating between the sulfate and this coat wash. So I did already buy the coat wash. It's going straight into my shower and I will rebuy the sulfate shampoo once it's like gone, but I still have a lot of that left. I just really like this collection. The conditioners weren't as great as the shampoos. I just have other conditioners I like better, but the shampoos from this line, amazing, incredible, show-stopping, spectacular. <laughs> I loved them. So yes, already rebought that one. Speaking of conditioners, I have the deep uh, conditioning mask from the same line, the Head & Shoulders Royal Oils Deep Moisture Mask with Coconut Oil. This smelled incredible. Oh man, I can smell this all day. It smells really nice, but the deep conditioner itself, I would have rather used this as a regular shower conditioner. It wasn't like the best deep conditioning treatment I've ever tried. Not the worst also not the best. So like I said, I really like the conditioners and the scalp spray from this line. The conditioners are just like meh. Stick to the shampoos and if you're just looking for a run-of-the-mill every day, not every day, but like every wash kind of conditioner, this works but I have other conditioners I like better. Last but not least for hair care, we have a gel that blew my mind and I have it in my cart. I don't know when I'm gonna place my next order, but I need this because I love it. This is from Mizani and this was sent to me um, through Influencer. This is the True Textures Coils, Curls, Coils, Waves, Perfect Coil Oil Gel. And because this is marketed towards like a coilier hair type, I didn't think this would work well for me. This is one of my favorite gels. It just, oh, uh, it, it kept shape. It just looked really good. It lasted like three or four days after a wash and it kept my curls looking like thick and plump and gorgeous. Whew. I love this gel. I went through the whole thing and I, I need to buy it. I need to buy one. I just, I need to. I need to have this in my life. It's amazing. It is a little pricey. The whole Mizani, Mizani line is a little pricey. This is probably the only product I've tried so far that like I can't live without. I need this oil gel, <laughs> coiled oil coil oil gel try saying that five times fast but i need this in my life like i said you can get this at sephora now the entire line is at sephora um i need this i need it so i'm probably gonna be placing an order soon because i've got a couple other gels back here that i'm testing out but this worked so well for me i need it i need it in my life <laughs> all right before we move on to skincare i have a couple of body care items it's just a body spray and a lotion so these were actually a really late Christmas gift from my family apparently apparently my dad cleaned out a closet in his house and they found Christmas presents they forgot to send me from like two years ago yeah so one of the presents was just this cute little set of minis and they're all cherry blossom scented these are from Body Ecology there was a body spray a tiny little lotion and then some bath bombs I can't use bath bombs in our bath because we got a new one put in and it's like very fragile so I didn't use those but I used the body spray and the lotion it smelled amazing and I just I loved it the lotion itself was a little thin but smelled really nice I liked it and the body spray I went through it kind of fast but I also really liked it it was a cute little traveler set gift which <sighs> No one's traveling now, so I just used it, but I liked it and it was a really cute little gift, even if I got it two years late. Moving into skincare. For makeup remover, I have this Bioderma, that's what's the actual name? Bio, it's in French. <laughs> it's just the Bioderma Micellar Water. This is actually really good, but I do think it's a bit pricey. Um, I'm trying to remember how much I paid for this. It's more than I was normally willing to pay for a micellar water, but I did buy a double pack off of Amazon a few weeks ago because like we were out of micellar water and I couldn't find any in any CVS's or Walgreens near us, so I just bought it online. This big bottle lasted me a good, I want to say month and a half. I only use this to take off my eye makeup every day, but I do wear makeup every day. So this is a really great micellar water. I just take everything off and it's great. I just think it's a little pricey. My favorite of all time is still the CeraVe micellar water that like I got one bottle of it and then it disappeared off the face of the earth for like forever. I cannot find that again. But until then, I will be using this one. I did buy this in a pack of two. So I have the new one uh, currently open in my bathroom that I will keep using until it is empty. And I think when this the, the new one is halfway empty, I'll place another order on Amazon for another two pack of these because... It's just really good. I like how big this is. This is 16.7 fluid ounces, so I feel like it lasts for a long enough time. Gets everything off with one cotton pad and just really good. Speaking of makeup remover, I had this tiny little sample of the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. I like to save this for traveling because uh, I didn't like to travel with too many things and having like a nice little cleansing balm really worked. Of course, no one's traveling this year. So I've been working through all my little samples that I keep in my traveling drawer, and this is one of the things I worked through. 
I really liked this for taking off my face makeup. For my eye makeup, not great. And also, this is actually way too expensive for me to ever buy again. So I'm never going to buy this, ever. <laughs> but I did have this little sample that I got for free and I just wanted to use it up. So I did. All right, before we get into my day-to-day -day skincare, let's jump into some masks that I finished up in a, a moisturizer. This is another little sample. I've been trying to clean out my little... Uh, sample traveling bin like I said this is from Avenue, and this is the hydrants cream hydration light hydrating cream honestly this really wasn't anything to write home about which is a sample I got for free with an order probably from Sephora and it was just okay I think it smelled a little too much it's like one of those luxury brands that puts too much scent into their moisturizer yeah it was like that so not a huge fan but I used it next we have the empty of the bite agave lip balm this took me forever to use up and i freaking loved this stuff it's way too expensive for what it is this is actually it came in a mini like gift set so this isn't the full size one but it's expensive i don't think i'm ever gonna buy it again i'm currently just using a blistex because that works just as well but i really liked this if i were ever to splurge like in my sephora one thousand dollar uh, fantasy basket which i did a few days ago i'll throw it up in the cards if you missed it but if it was like that kind of thing, I would treat myself to this. But in my normal day-to-day -day life, no, <laughs> I'm not. Unless I can buy this during the holidays for cheap, which is where this came from. So I like it. I really like it. Probably not going to buy it again. Next, we have a little mini of a face mask from Fresh. This is the Lotus Youth Preserve Rescue Mask. This, I don't know. I think this is a Fresh mask. It might have just gone bad, but it smelled really bad and it didn't really do anything for my skin. Actually, I have to be lucky and thankful that I didn't break out from this because it just wasn't great. So, not for me. Next, unfortunately, this was a packaging fail. I literally can't get the rest of the product out of here. This is from e.l.f. and this is the Clarifying Charcoal Bubble Mask. I had this for a long time, I have to admit, so maybe it just went bad, but I tried to, it's like spilling out on top, but I tried to use this and like pump up the mask, it won't come out anymore. So I think it just went bad and I'm no longer able to get it out of the container, but like I think I only got to use this once. I mean that's totally my fault for leaving it in my, um, my pantry, for not pantry, but in like my linen closet for too long before using it. I think I've had this for at least a year, but I finally got around to using up all my masks. This is one of my last ones and I wanted to use it and it just wouldn't come out. It was just stuck. So um, unfortunately, I don't know if I can recycle this because it's still got like the entire mask in here. So I might just have to throw this away and like recycle the cap, unfortunately, but uh, I can't really give a review because I use this like literally once. All right, getting down to brass texas the facial cleanser that is in literally every one of my empties videos because i love it this is the cerave hydrating facial cleanser it's my go-to it's affordable i love this it's great for sensitive skin just i could wax poetic about this all day i love it i use it morning and night fantastic get it <laughs> next this isn't like my go-to moisturizer but this was back when um quarantine was in full effect and like you really couldn't find anything at stores so I literally picked up the one moisturizer I saw at the store because there's nothing else. This is the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion. It's a good lotion but just not my normal go-to but it, it worked perfectly fine. I don't like how small it is like compared to the face wash. I'd rather them be the same size. If anything I'm going to go through the lotion quicker than the face wash but uh yeah I mean it worked but it's not like like if I was in a pickle I would pick this up and use it. It did work really well. But it's not my favorite or my go-to. Do with that with what? La la. Do with that information what you will. All right. So these last few things are like literally my go-tos. I think they've been in just about every one of my empties videos. Uh, the CeraVe Skin Renewing Retinol Serum. My favorite retinol. It is fairly affordable for a retinol. Uh, you can find these on Amazon or in a, a Walgreens or CVS. Recently, I've been trying to buy everything online because I can't find most of anything recent, like locally to me, but I love this. Um, it used to come in different packaging, and I liked the other packaging better. It was a squeezy tube so I could cut it open and get everything out. Now it's in this. I just think it's a waste of packaging. Honestly, they could have stuck with the squeezy tube. It would have been better. Nevertheless, it's still a great product, and I use this every night. Next, we have the caffeine solution from The Ordinary. I use this every day, morning and night, on my under eyes, on my lid, and like in between here and up onto my forehead. It depuffs, it helps reduce my fine lines, and it just looks and feels amazing. I have one open in my bathroom, I have two on backup, and I have this empty. I just always have this available. It's amazing. I love this stuff. 
And last but certainly not least, I have the Ordinary's Asorable, Ascorable, Sorble, Asorable Tetraslopalamatite solution 20 okay this is it's a vitamin c it's one of their vitamin c's so this is one of the higher level vitamin c's that i was using and i really liked it i really like this one i'm currently working i think i have another bottle of this one and then maybe one of a stronger vitamin c but i'm not buying vitamin c from like any other company ever again because the ones from the ordinary are so much more affordable they've got the same the nice packaging because you need to have it like in a dark bottle so that it doesn't re react to like sunlight or anything and they work really well I use these every morning and it's it's made a, a world of difference in like my skincare in like my skin being more bright and just better so again use this daily um, I would recommend checking out the ordinary's website they have a nice chart breakdown of all of their vitamin C's so I started from the very bottom like their lowest percentage of vitamin C and then I worked my way up so I really recommend checking out that chart and then working your way from there all right so Getting into makeup, let's start with a little sample of a primer I had. I had a little mini of the Hard Candy Primer. This balled and pilled on my skin really badly. I honestly hated it, but I wanted to use up the little mini that I had, so I used it up, got it out of here. Good riddance. Next, I have two uh, primer slash setting sprays. The first one is from Smashbox. I really liked this priming spray. This works really well under super matte foundations. It's hella overpriced. Uh, I don't remember when I bought this. I think this was in my backup drawer for like months and months, if not a year. So I don't think I'm ever going to buy this again anytime soon because, hello, it's expensive. But I did like it. And I do like the scent and I do like the way that it works on my skin. But yeah, it's not necessary. It's, it's, a, it's a want, not a need. Next, this setting spray that I was actually pretty excited to try out, which didn't work the best for me. This is the Milani Make It Last Matte Setting Spray. Now, back when uh, I was actually leaving my house, you know, and... March of 2020. I tried using the setting spray when it got a little bit hotter outside and it would just crease. Like my makeup would break up and I would see creases here around my nose and on my forehead. When I'm staying home, like here, working at my desk, staying in the house, the setting spray worked really well. But I think it's because I wasn't really doing much of anything. I wasn't sweating super hard. I wasn't like going to an office taking two trains and blah 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 so i'm glad i could finish it now that i'm in the house but i feel like for anyone looking for like a long wear setting spray this isn't it if you're staying in your house and you want a nice setting spray that'll meld all your powders together and still make you pretty matte then yeah it works but really how many people are looking for that kind of setting spray yeah, so this is a, this is a, like a meh setting spray for me. I still love the original. I have two of the original Make It Last. I love that. That's a good MAC Fix Plus dupe. But the matte one, meh. Moving on to foundations. I have one uh, white mixer empty. This is from LA Girl. This is the Pro Coverage HD foundation in the shade white. I am pale. Very pale. So I do need this to make a lot of my foundations work. Thankfully, I actually have a couple of foundations that match me without that, which uh, the, the ColourPop one was one of them. I've got uh, the MAC foundation. I've got another new foundation that I just got that matches me well without mixing, but I did need this for a lot of other foundations. So I think I have one more left in my collection, and then I might need to buy another one because pale. <laughs> but I do love this. It doesn't change the... Um, formula of any foundation I mix it with. It just works really well. It lightens the foundation and helps actually like lengthen your foundations too. If you mix this in with your foundation every day, your foundation is going to last longer. So really good go-to. It's like $7.99 or $8.99 at CVS or Walgreens and it's just a really good go-to. Speaking of the ColourPop, this is the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. This is very similar to the Milani Make It Last setting spray, the matte one, in that when I wore this outside, it looked really trashy, really bad. But when I wore this in the house, it actually looked pretty nice. And so I was able to finish it up. You see, it's actually empty. But I would never buy this again because I did get to see how it looked when I actually put this on before a full work day when I left the house. If you're looking for a really, like, low coverage... BB cream for around the house it's okay but like again if you're gonna be going out if you're gonna be doing anything strenuous if you're gonna be having a long day this never looked great on my face after a day outside so 
I'm never gonna buy it again, but I'm glad I actually got to finish it up because if anything, I would have hate to like had to declutter this not empty. So that is one good thing about quarantine. I get to use up a lot of products that otherwise just didn't work for me. Getting my money's worth. Next, we have an empty that's actually been in my collection for a while, and this is the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. I had to get the shade 27, which is so dark, but this is the only shade that had a nice warm undertone that could I could work with. I would then have to mix this with a white mixer to match Casper. But I did talk about this a little bit more in depth in the movie, and I'm moving. I did cover this a bit more in detail in the, the video I made, I think about a year ago at this point, all about the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. I'll put that up in the cards if you missed it. Overall, this is an awesome BB Cream. I just hate the shade range as trash, but I, I love the rest of it. The only other downside is the smell. It does smell like grandma's perfume, but it does go away once you like set it with powder or anything. But it's such a good BB Cream. I just wish they made more shades because I don't know if it's worth it to buy again when I had to put that much work into lightening it, you know? So it's probably a no on the rebuy, but I really liked it. And I got this at Target, the 20s, the shade 27 I found at Target. All right, I mixed a primer. This is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in Eden. I had this for a while. It was in my backup drawer, and I used it until the point where I had to cut it open to really get the rest of it out. And once I did that, I think this dried out or went bad, because as soon as I did that, it started getting gunky, it started really like not working well at all and not working like I knew primer potion could work so I had to like even though it's not 100% empty I had to stop using it because it like it went bad uh, which really makes me sad because this is an awesome like eyeshadow primer but I think maybe I just had it too long in my collection and then once I cut it open and it was open to the air it just went bad so unfortunately I couldn't finish it but this is a great eyeshadow primer and I do think if you buy the full size it's a bit expensive a bit really expensive but if you buy the full size it is actually fairly worth it because it does last forever especially if you cut it open if you just use this until you can no longer get any out on the on the little wand you're missing out because once you cut it open you have like a month more of eyeshadow primer in here which is a lot all right next we have a concealer this is from makeup revolution this is the conceal and hydrate in the shade c1 so this is actually the closest shade match for me right now and i don't like this as much as the conceal and perfect concealer but it did work pretty well, especially on my dry under eyes. I probably will buy this again. I don't like the packaging. The packaging gets really dirty and it's hard to get the stopper out to really scrape out all the product. But it is a good go-to affordable foundation with an foundation, affordable concealer with a great shade range. So I do like promoting this because it is a great formula and it did work really well for me, especially considering how hard it is to find a really good affordable concealer but this is great. My favorites are the original Conceal and Perfect, and then the Shop Miss A under eye concealer that is so good. It's amazing. <laughs> Speaking of under eyes, I actually went through this a lot quicker than I thought I would, but this is from Notoriously Morbid Cosmetics, and this is the End Finishing Powder. So it's just a white, loose um, powder for your under eyes. I only like this on my under eyes. I tried using this to set, because now that it's summer, I like setting my whole T-zone with my loose powder but when I use this on my up anywhere where I sweat around here or on my upper nose upper nose upper lip uh, I noticed that when I sweat it wouldn't react well with this powder and it turned white stark white and it just looked like I had a mustache I didn't like it <laughs> so it worked great for under my eyes so like on dry areas but like here here, here it looked terrible the rest of my face which is also kind of shocking why I used this up so quickly. I thought this would last me longer. I think I only used this for like a month straight and then it was gone. So a little pricey, but I did like it for under my eyes, but I, I do like having more product for like a loose under eye or a loose powder because I do go through it. I do use it every day. So while it was good, um, it, it's like a, it's like a solid 3.5 from me. Moving on, I have an empty pan here. <laughs> And I just dropped it. Moving on, I have an empty pan here from Wet n Wild. This is actually one half of one of their contour palettes. I'll throw a picture up here so you can actually see it. I depotted this and unfortunately the pans are not magnetic so I did have to add mag mag magnets to the back of this. But I used the face powder side. I still have the contour side which is a decent contour but I don't go through it as quickly. Uh, I really like Wet n Wild's face powders. They're fairly good. They're dependable. I do go through them pretty quickly though but for how affordable they are really don't mind. So I did finish up the first half. I had to repress it at one point, and I think I repressed it mixed with another powder, 
it represses amazingly it works really well and i did use up the entire thing so yay <laughs> next we have a mascara that i'm actually pretty shocked i i hated i hated this mascara so much <laughs> this is from nars and this is the climax mascara i got a little mini from sephora i've heard so many people rave about this mascara but I tried it and like every day I put this on, I looked like shit. I hated, I hated this mascara. It looked terrible. I didn't do anything for my lashes. If I curled them, they went brr. If I did anything to my lashes, they would always just stick straight out like this and like barely look black. It just didn't look good. It didn't. And I, I hated the brush. It's just poofy. I, I didn't like anything about this mascara. Like to the point where I didn't even use this for the full three months. I just wanted to throw it into an empties and I just got my next favorite mascara which is $4.99 this is way more expensive but I really don't like this so I don't recommend this, this mascara at all not a fan at all just total fail Ugh. oh my god we're at the end last but not least we have my favorite favorite clear brow gel and that is the NYX control freak brow gel I love everything about this I love the spoolie I love <laughs> I love the packaging. I love the formula. It's a really great dupe for the ABH clear brow gel that I also love, but that's way too expensive. This is affordable. I need to buy another one because I'm actually out. I, I have the ABH, not the clear brow gel, but the ABH tinted brow gel, which is not the best. Not the best. I love the ABH clear brow gel, but it's $20. No, this is like $4. So I need to buy more of these actually. I might place another ultra order sometime soon, but love this clear brow gel. It's great, keeps everything in place nothing budges I, I can't even count how many times i've gone through one of these i've used so many of them love this clear brow gel oh so by my count i think i've been talking for like an hour about empties so those are all of my current empties let me know down below what's the last product you used up and i cannot wait to see you in my next video bye